Hey guys, Tommy here. Just wanted to do a DIY project today. My wife went to the garage to get her tires rotated and they told her that she needed brakes and rotors. The cost was going to be $350. Now, parts for those jobs is only equal to about $100. So that means they're charging about $250 in labor. We're only going to replace the pads today because I checked the rotors and it doesn't seem like there's any pulsating or any problem there. You can check your owner's manual do what you want. We're just going to do the pads. Cost us about $22 for Duralast pads. Job should be relatively easy, but apples to apples comparison, if we were changing the brakes and the rotors out, $100 in parts, we're going to be saving $250 in labor. All right, guys, this is a relatively easy job. Just about anybody can do it if you have a few basic tools and a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of guts. You need some confidence to do this, but once you get it done, you'll have a lot more confidence. So don't be afraid to give this a try. All right guys, first things first, we have to loosen the lug nuts on the tire. You want to do that while the car is still on the ground. So we're using a 19 millimeter socket and a wrench and I have a breaker bar somewhere but it's packed away, I can't find it. I have this old shotgun barrel that I use as a breaker bar. And we're going to go ahead and break these loose just a little bit then we're going to bring it up on the jack and I'll take you from there on exactly how we're going to remove this, what tools we're going to use. Should only be about a hundred foot pounds of torque on here, but check your manual. Again, I have a torque wrench packed away. I'm not trying to hunt for it. I'm just trying to get this done. Now you see how the car is moving a little bit? That's why you want to do this while it's still on the ground. Otherwise, you're just going to spin the tire. Okay, guys, this is the jack, and it's got like a little cleat in here that's going to go right up into this frame part. So you just want to do it just in back of the tire, and we're going to go ahead and raise it up. And I'm just using the jack that comes with the vehicle. Now the tire is jacked up off the ground, so you can go ahead and you can loosen the lug nuts all the way. Now, it's always a good idea, put your car, put the parking brake on when it's up off the ground, and put a jack stand up underneath the car for safety. If you don't have a jack stand, you can put something solid up underneath there so that if the car falls off the jack, it's not going to fall straight down onto the rotor or the frame or anything like that so you can use something like the wheel you can put the wheel up underneath that for safety okay, so now you got to take the caliper pins out and there's two of them there's one right here on the top and then there's one on the bottom one right up here on the top one on the bottom so you need a 13 millimeter socket and it's good to have a 15 millimeter wrench because there's another nut over here on the other side that's going to loosen up i don't have 15 millimeter uh, wrenches i don't have metric wrenches i have a 5 8 inch a standard wrench and I'm going to see if we can get that to work and it shouldn't be a whole lot of torque on this I'm going to take this out All right, that's 5 eighths is working just fine it comes right out Set them off to the side and do the bottom ones. I got a little magnetic right here. You get them at Harbor Freight. Sometimes you get a free coupon for them, but it's helpful to not be able to lose any of these. You don't want to lose your lug nuts or your caliper pins or anything like that. So just make sure you don't lose them if you don't have one of those. These are really the two pins, the only two pins you have to take off to get the caliper off. Yeah. All right, we're going to just take the caliper right off of here. Slides off nice and easy. Now, you can use a coat, coat hanger, wire coat hanger, or something else. If you want to tie this up out of the way, I'm just, I got an old piece of wire here. I'm going to use the tie up and get it out of the way. I just put it up around the spring here, and hopefully it's got enough where we can hold that. No problemo. Handy. Yeah, you just don't want to have it fall because the line could break. This can get to be a dirty job because there's brake dust all over you, so I'm using gloves here. It's usually kind of helpful. If you were to replace the rotors, you'd have to take off a couple of more bolts back here. That would come off and you would pull the rotor off. But these rotors look to be okay. Um, some, some rotors you can turn. It's usually a little less expensive. But, I mean, the rotors, uh, you know, midline, you're talking about $35 a piece. Brake pads were like $22. And that's where I came up with the $100 for parts and $250 for labor. So we got part of it done. Now, here are the old pads right here. We're going to just pull them off. They should just slide right out. And there's little clips in here. And the new brake should come with clips. Now, these, these pads don't look that bad. They said that we have 2 millimeters. But I'll compare them 
I'll compare them to the other pads once we take both of them off. I'll show you what we got. Here we got the Weaver Silver brake pads. And I'm going to just compare them to the old ones so we can see what we're looking at. Ladies, if you're watching this, you know when you go to a mechanic, sometimes you feel like you're being taken advantage of. Well, it happens to guys too. Don't feel bad. The reality of it is, is mechanics will take advantage a bad mechanic. There are good mechanics out there, but mechanics will take advantage of anybody, but sometimes more so females than males. But here's what we got for the old brake pads. There are the new brake pads. The old brake pads, I'll put them up here. The old brake pads don't look that bad. They made it sound like, wow, these need to be replaced right away. And I think we got quite a bit of life back on the uh, old brake pads. So I think they're full of it. And that's unfortunate that they did that. We could have got away with using these for a while longer. But now that we're into it, we're going to replace them regardless. All right, gang, the next thing that we have to do is we have to compress the, the caliper piston. Because it's out, we need to bring it all the way back in. A couple things you need to be concerned about. First off, you need to put something over here so it applies pressure directly onto the piston evenly. I'll just use an old brake pad. Secondly, you're going to need some type of a clamp. You can use a C-clamp or this is a bar clamp. I think these are three bucks on sale at Harbor Freight. They're cheap. Put them on there. Just clamp it down. Nice and easy. Not a whole lot of pressure. Alright guys, so we're going to want to compress that, but I'm going to take you up to the engine bay right quick and show you something that you're going to want to pay attention to while you're doing this. So we're going to go ahead into the engine bay here. This is your brake master cylinder right here. You're going to want to just take that cap off and leave it off while you're doing this because there's fluid in there and as you compress the cylinder the caliper cylinder the brake fluid is going to start to fill back up in this reservoir and you don't want it to overfill so you want to just be cognizant of that and if it does start to get near the top you're going to need to have to take some of it out of there with some type of a siphon or some type of a ball syringe something like that turkey baster maybe if you're not going to get into too much trouble you can replace it when your wife's not looking all right so I'm applying pressure to the old brake pad that I have on there and I just want to compress that cylinder all the way. Just do a little bit of time, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure or force and we're going to go ahead and just keep an eye on the master cylinder up there make sure we're not overflowing. Alright, we're still good on the master cylinder and we're going to show you down here at the caliper what, what we got. Alright, so we went ahead and we just compressed it all the way down and you can just take this bar clamp off Now we're going to go ahead and put the new pads in down here. Now this did not come with any, it didn't come with new clips and it didn't come with grease. So we're going to go ahead and just put a little grease on the back of these because that sometimes will really uh, do away with the squeaking issues that sometimes you'll have. All right guys, we're going to just apply a little bit, a little bit of grease. Sometimes these will come with new clips and new, gre and new grease. They say, and I don't know this for it sure. Like peanut butter. Yeah, it does. I'm no mechanic, but they say that this will um, minimize squeaking. So I always just put a little bit of grease back there, spread it around nice, and get an even coat of grease. You don't want to get any grease, obviously, on the front side of the pad. Grease and braking doesn't mix. Just put a little bit on the back side. Use a little bit on this one as well. Again, if you know that this does or doesn't work, put it in the comments. Just a backyard mechanic trying to save a few bucks. That one that I do on this one. All right, now we're going to just put the new pads on. So these pads are basically identical, with the exception of one of them has a little uh, metal piece sticking out there. That's the back side, okay? So you're going to want to put that on the rotor. And you can see the rounded edge that's going to go on the rounded edge here, okay? Just got to put it this way. Should be pretty intuitive. Go these ahead. cleats fit in those little clips. should fit in there nice and easy like so and then I'll do the front one like so now last thing we got to do is just put the caliper back on so we're going to want to take it off the road the wire that we have up there we can obviously get rid of the old brake pad again the reason why we hung that up on a wire because we're on a rubber hose here we don't want to damage that I'm going to just install this back on there it should slide on relatively easy because we compressed the piston and we got this metal piece as kind of the shim on there. Again, that's going to help with the rattle. We want to be careful that we don't bend that up. It can get a little tricky putting that on. You're just going to kind of be careful and wiggle it on. Okay. And 
once these compress a little bit back here, you can use that, slide those in, and get that back up to where you need it. And just go ahead. Now these have Loctite on them, and I do have Loctite, but again, it's it's away, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go without the Loctite. Again, you safety sallies are gonna freak out on me. Hand tighten it first. Get both of them in there, and we'll tighten it down. Put the wheel back on, and go to the other side. All right, so we just turned this socket to tighten because we had it on loosen. So we'll tighten this back up. Again, I think this is around 30 pounds of torque, 30 foot pounds of torque. And just tighten it down there. I don't want to over tighten and I wished I had my <laughs> Can't get my wrench off now. I'm gonna have to loosen up a little bit. I wish I had my Torque wrench handy, but I don't okay now. I'll tighten it up finish tightening it up Okay, and we'll just do the same on the other one guys make sure you don't forget to take that wire out of there You don't want to have that in there. It could cause a whole bunch of mess Get the wire out of there. We'll get the wheel back on. Tighten the lugs. And I'll show you the way you're supposed to tighten the lugs down. Go back to the wheel. You want to get the lugs on your 19 millimeter socket again. And you want to tighten it in a star pattern. And I just hand tighten it first. Just get it hand tight. And you don't want to tighten it down all the way. When I say star pattern, Put in one there and go over here. The reason why you do that is you want it to torque down evenly. And you hand tighten it first so you don't strip your lugs. You're going to finish tightening this down once you get the tire back on the ground for the same reason that you loosened it while the tire was still on the ground. Otherwise the tire is going to spin. Right, so now that it's snugged up on there, you just want to go around, star pattern again, and snug it up. You snug it up while it's still off the ground so again you're sure that it's fitting on there with the same pressure all the way around okay you can see it start to spin you're not doing your final tightening yet but you do want to make sure that it's snugged up against the hub properly now if you had a torque wrench sorry I got a plane going overhead but if you had a torque wrench check your owner's manual but I think we're looking at a hundred foot pounds guys now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring the car down and finish tightening the lugs. Okay guys, this is where we do the breaker bar and the final tightening. And I want to get them nice and snug on there. And then what I do is I'll take it for a ride and then come back and snug it up again, make sure we're still good. It's nice and snug and again, star pattern. All right guys, so that's it. Now you just want to re repeat that same process on the other tire and you're good to go. You just saved yourself a boatload of cash and you feel confident, you feel good, you're a weekend warrior. <gasps> you're a mechanic now. Well, not really, but you're able to complete a job that most people are deathly afraid to do. They have no idea, and they're constantly being taken advantage of at the local mechanics. You can do this yourself. Just have a little confidence. Give it a try. Thanks for watching.